Mutual Welcome to Solar Industries Limited, fourth quarter FY23 conference call, hosted by Antique Stock Broking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manish Mahawar from Antique Stock Broking. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Zico. On behalf of Antique Stock Broking, I welcome all the participants to the 4Q FI23 Admin Call of Solar Industry. From the management, we have Mr. Manish Nival, MD and CEO, Mr. Suresh Menon, XC Director, Mr. Milin Deshmukh, XC Director, Mr. Moni Shagarwal, Joint CFO, Ms. Shalini Mandana, Joint CFO, and Ms. Archer Kevlani, Investor Relations on the call. Without any delay, I would like to hand over the call to Archer for opening remarks. Both week, we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Over to you, Archer. Thank you so much, Manish. A very good morning to our dear stakeholders and well wishers. My name is Anshul and I would like to welcome you all to the concluding conference call of FY23. To begin with, I would like to remind you that during this call, we might make projections or other forward-looking statements regarding future events and about the future financial <laughs> performance. Please remember that such statements are only predictions, actual events or results may differ materially and our website will be updated with all relevant information timely. Now I would request Solar CEO and MD, Mr. Manish G. Nuwal, for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. A very good morning to all the valued investors and other stakeholders. We are pleased to announce the highest ever quarterly revenue, which stands at rupees 19.29 crores, up by 46%, and the highest ever yearly revenue, which stands at rupees 6,923 crores, up by 75%. The net profit is up by 26% for the quarter and 78% for the year, which stands at rupees 221 crores and rupees 811 crores respectively. The strong growth of our non-CIL and institutional sector, along with the exports and overseas business, were the key drivers behind the growth in our top line. These results are being achieved with the improved operational performance, despite the challenges arising mainly out of volatility in commodity prices, currency fluctuations, and hyperinflationary conditions, which demonstrates the strength of the company. We are delighted to share that we have achieved the highest ever defense revenue in this quarter and the annual revenue has reached to a milestone of rupees 400 crores, which is in line with our guidance given at the beginning of the year. Our defense order book has now crossed 1100 crores mark, which is a big milestone for our company. The order book comprises of export orders of Pinaka rockets, Nagastra, which is a lighting ammunition, and other ammunitions, which are for variety of applications. We are expecting the product evaluation of Pinaka rockets to be completed in around three months' time, and the orders from these rockets will substantially push the revenue from defense in the coming years. On this backdrop, we are expecting the defense revenue to double in the current financial year. Our corporate objectives and business goals are aligned with the country's ambition to make our country atmanirbhar in the field of ammunition and emerge as a major export hub in the coming years. In line with our strategic plans to expand our market presence in the country, we have acquired Rajasthan Explosives and Chemicals Limited and have started land acquisition for our upcoming facilities in south and northwest of India. And we are expecting these projects to complete in the next two years. We are also working on our expanding global manufacturing facilities from eight countries to 12 countries in this year. 
the government of india's strong policy support and huge outlays for infrastructure projects like housing mining and providing a level playing field in the private sector for defense will do good for our company we are expecting a volume growth of around 15% based on strong demand from coal housing and infrastructure sectors we are entering fy24 with an optimistic outlook on increasing our ebitda margins via enhancing the market footprint new orders from defense section and reduce raw material prices looking at the upcoming opportunities our strategic investment we have planned capex of around 750 crores in fy24 which includes defense domestic and overseas businesses our company has also proposed a dividend of rupees 8 per share for the current year as compared to rupees 7.5 in the previous year now i will hand over the discussions to achal to take you through the financial in detail thank you thank you so much sir before beginning i would like to quote this year has been a phenomenal in solar history where we have achieved many milestones a few to mention so far are highest revenue and profit achieved huge capex plan for fy24 share price achieved a major high and crossed around 4400 mark strong return to stakeholders and crossing market cap of 30000 crores the strong defense order book of 1100 plus crores export order of panaka rocket nagas was successfully converted in commercial order strategic investment and at the end our continuous foundation to achieve sustainable growth ahead now we would like to share a few highlights for the quarter and financial year though we have already shared the investor presentation carrying all the necessary information for your perusal on the website and the exchanges key highlights for the fourth quarter are the consolidated revenue is up by 46% at 1929 crores explosive revenue is up by 15% that is 903 crores our explosive volume has increased by 13% and stands at 135007 metric ton realization of explosive was almost same that is at 69913 per metric ton initiating system revenue increased by 44% and stands at 169 crores in the customers basket the top contributors in absolute terms are exports and overseas at 737 crores giving a growth of 90% and non cnl and institutional sector at 379 crores giving a growth of 91% cool india as a percent of revenue stands at 15% as compared to 20% in the previous year housing and infra revenue stands at 20% of the revenue defense revenue is up by 54% in the quarter at rupees 111 crores coming to the cost break up raw material consumption increased by 46% year on year stands at 1191 crores employee cost has increased by 12% stands at 99 crores other expenses has increased by 89% stands at 281 crores we reported an ebitda of 369 crores showing an increase of 40% interest and finance charges is at 31 crores depreciation has increased by 19% to 35 crores cbt has increased by 38% stands at 302 crores tat has increased by 26% and stands at 221 crores these were the updates for the quarter let me let me now take you through the yearly performance The revenue for the year is up by 75% year on year that is from 3948 crores to 6923 crores a massive jump domestic explosive quantity sales up by 13% realization has increased by 39% revenue from domestic explosives increased by 58% 
Initiating systems, domestic revenue increased by 36% year on year. Coal India as a percent of sale is at 15% in the basket from 18% in the previous year. It has grown by 49% and contributes 1,067 crores. Non-CILM institution has grown by massive 138%, stands at 1,278 crores. Housing and infra has grown by 36% and stands at 1,322 crores. Export and overseas has shown an increase of 95%, stands at 2,796 crores. Defense has shown a rise of 59% and stands at 396 crores. Coming to the cost breakup for the year, raw material cost is up by 87% year on year, stands at 4342 crores. The employee cost has increased by 22% and stands at 363 crores. Other expenses have gone up by 61%, stands at 939 crores. EBITDA has increased by 72%, stands at 1320 crores. Interest in finance has increased from 50 to 90 crores. Depreciation has increased by 17%, stands at 128 crores. We recorded a CBT of 1102 crores compared to 670, which is an increase of 81%. That we recorded a part of 811 crores compared to 455, which is an increase of 78%. This is all from our side. Now we would like to have questions, comments, and suggestions that you may have. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Congratulations for a very good set of numbers. I have two questions. The first one is essentially on the revenue side. If we look at uh, revenue, it is up 75% by UI for FY23 compared to your guidance of 65% just a quarter back. So, uh, you know, given the ammonium nitrate prices have come off and we have not seen that getting reflected in your uh, revenue so far. Uh, uh, the sub part of the question is that how much of these ammonium nitrate, is, nitrate prices are getting reflected and uh, what would be your revenue growth guidance for FY24? That is the first question. The second one is on the, if you can provide the order book split uh, in defense between export and domestic. Also, uh, do we have any uh, opportunity in the propellant side, particularly for Brahmos and product? These are the two questions I have. Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is regarding your first question. You have asked that what is the guidance on the revenue side. I would like to explain it in this way that in this financial year, we are targeting a volume growth of around 15% and it can go up to 20%, which will be one of the which will be one of the rare years in which we have been we will be achieving a growth of around 15 to 20 percent this is one of the rarest of rare years second is that we have recently acquired rajasthan explosives and chemicals and in this year our businesses from overseas will do even better than what we have done in this year and like we have shared that defense order book has reached to 1100 and defense revenue should double from the current level of 400 crores to 800 crores. All these factors will help the company to not only maintain the current top line, the reason is that we are not sure how much it can fall, but still we are expecting that prices will fall and it will make the products at a reasonable prices, which will help the increasing the demand, which we have seen that in the last year, 
the demand was very much subdued especially from housing and infrastructure sector so correction in the finished good prices will help to improve the demand but we are expecting that in this year we will maintain the top line and we will increase the EBITDA margins from 18-19% to around 21-22%. to 22%. As far as your another question on a propellant for Brahmos, like there has been a news in the media that we have indigenized the booster part for the first time and we are expecting more orders in the coming years. So as and when it will come, we will definitely share with you. And what about Pralai, sir? So Pralai, we are, we are part of the development program. And once it will start commercialization, we will definitely share. Wonderful, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Kaushik Mohan from Ashika Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, sir, for the opportunity and congratulations for the great set of numbers. Sir, I just wanted some more clarity on the order book side. You have mentioned that you have an order book of uh, 2,944 crores, uh, and it has been segregated between uh, two sites, and one is defense of 1,118 crores. Sir, uh, is this uh, order that you are mentioning is your, uh, how, how the order book has been calculated? Are you, if you are receiving any advances, then only you tell it as an order book? Or is it only the promise has been told as an order book? Uh, no, as regards the defense order book of 1100 crores plus, so we have received the orders. So we have those orders in hand. So as uh, correctly Manuji has said that uh, defense revenue will increase from 400 to 800 crores. So these orders are included in that. And as it has the balance order book of 1826 crores, that is the explosive order book from Coal India as well as Singhrani. The tender for Coal India <coughs> will uh, start again in this October. So Coal India order book is till October 23. So once the additional order is received, we'll inform accordingly. Got it. And another question is from on operating margins, that is EBITDA margins. Uh, what is the guidance for the coming years that you are targeting to increase your operating margins? What can the range be in the future coming years? So we are targeting around 20 to 22%. 20 to 22%. 20 to 22%. Okay. Uh, and uh, any, any uh, uh, thoughts on the return on equity and ROC? So currently, our return on equity stands at around uh, 24 percent, and the ROC stands at around 30 percent. So this will uh, remain at the current levels. In fact, increase further because of the uh, coming fall in the whatever we see as the rental prices stabilize in the current period. Good. Good. Uh, so the last and final question is on the inventory days. Mom, uh, any. Uh, chances of controlling down or reducing down the inventory days from currently what I can see from my calculations it comes out to be 80, uh, 94 days uh, so any thought process on those so, uh, so that's why 22 the inventory days were around 113 days and currently it has come down to 92 days and with current stabilization of raw material prices we do feel that it should come down to around 80 days it should come down to it does. And this can be achieved in FY24? Yes. Okay. okay. Thanks, much. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Uh, many congrats on your strong set of numbers. Uh, sir, the question on clarification, so you mentioned roughly 750 crore rupees capex. And we are looking for expansion in north and south to be in over next two years. So, if you can just give us a breakup of the seven sixty road on the domestic market, international, and different. Uh, on seven fifty crore, so we are expecting we are plan we are planning of around we are planning around three fifty crores in different, around one fifty crores uh, in overseas, and balance two fifty crores for our domestic exclusives. Okay. Uh, you also mentioned that this year you are increasing international presence, adding four more countries to income pick up. Well. If you can just share some more details, which are the countries you have selected, what kind of investment you will be making? 
she's there and uh, on our uh, last uh, two to three years the story which we have made in the countries like Australia, uh, South Africa and all these markets, how they have been ramping up. So this four countries, as we have spoken, so once uh, these materializes, will inform accordingly. And as regards uh, the last three, four years investments so we had done in Australia, that has uh, started manufacturing. Ghana has also started. We have come up with the plant in Tanzania that is also running well. And Indonesia also has started. Uh, okay, so in terms of the profitability, like in South Africa, Australia, these market is still, I mean, uh, I don't know about the 23 numbers, we don't have a breakup, but in 22, these markets is still was the activity level negative. Uh, in 24, in 23, if you can share that which market has become TBT positive, and uh, if, if you can share that detail. Uh, you're speaking for FY23? Yes. Or four. So in 23, yeah, in 23, we had a beta positive in both Australia as well as South Africa. However, due to currency fluctuations, the currency fluctuated around 25% in uh, respective territories. So on that account, we have uh, losses at a beta level. But we see PBT level, but we see PBT positive in this year. Operational profit has been achieved in both the territories. Okay. Uh, also, in, in markets like Turkey and all, which has been also uh, quite languishing because of the economy problem in those countries, uh, how is the market outlook in uh, those, uh, those territories? Yeah, as far as Turkey is concerned, definitely they were, uh, we have seen that there was a big natural calamity and that has affected the, the demand in that market. But in this year, we are expecting that demand will stabilize and the operations in Turkey will do better. Okay. Uh, sir, our vision capex, we are talking about up to 350 crores per bus in current year. However, we have been constantly investing and I think that we have really scaled our capabilities in many parts, including Missile integrations and all. So the, the 350 crore the capital which you are talking about, it will be actually in developing the further capability by expanding the basket, or it will be in the existing product basket and product line itself, like drones or uh, uh, missile integration uh, in all those facilities. Yeah, the uh, most of the capex program which we have shared for defense will definitely go for expanding the product range in lighting and munitions, and we are also working on developing counter drone systems, counter drone systems, and we are also developing another series of rockets. So, for developing these products, we need to do capex, and apart from this, we are also working on variety of products which will require capex to do the establish the manufacturing facilities. And in coming years, we are expecting that Pinaka rockets will commercialize because we have already received the export orders of Pinaka. And we need to expand the facilities also because defense is a very different ball game. And we have the facilities right starting from high energy materials, pop plants, and we have the storage facilities, we do have the testing facilities. So we can say that we have a complete one-stop solution for most of the defense programs. So to expand this kind of uh, strength which we have developed, we need to do capex so that we can absorb new technologies and develop new products as well. Thank you. Mr. Rohan Gupta, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Our next question is from the line of Danajay Bagrodia from ASK. Please go ahead. Mr. 
Mr. Bagrodia, your line has been unmuted. You can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Hello. please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. I want to understand, A, and your balance sheet, uh, our networking capital has really, uh, has reduced networking capital days. Uh, you're on your, any reason uh, specifically for that? Networking capital. Yeah, networking capital. Your working capital days. Working capital days, you know, earlier it was uh, last year we had closed around 90 days. This year uh, the days are around 95 days. However, to mention, uh, and we are targeting it to come down this year. However, to mention that, in fact, the data days has come down uh, drastically along with the inventory days also. But along with that, the credit days has also come down. So as a result, it's showing 95 days. And we are targeting around 85 days in the coming year. Targeting 85, and so uh, uh, what was what in this quarter our growth was uh, substantially higher than what we had also expected. Any reasons, uh, particularly regarding that? I'm sorry, didn't get your question. So in this quarter, was there any specific reason for such a uh, high growth comparatively than what we'd expected? Uh, 1928. Uh, was there any? Uh, was it more realization led or was there volume overall in the segment? Actually, fourth quarter is always a good quarter for our company. As a result, the growth is there. Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Noel Waz from Union Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just have one question. So regarding our operating margins, uh, so can we expect that the current uh, operating margins at the end of FY23 should uh, continue or uh, should we expect it to be more in the realm of high teens kind of a number? Yeah, that is all from my side. Uh, this has already, already been answered, but I'll repeat that. So from current margin of 18 to 19%, we are targeting an EBITDA margin of 21 to 22% in the current year. Okay, thanks. thank you. That is all. I just wanted to add. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Karan Gupta from Varenium Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me a point of view. I have one question regarding the acquisitions we have uh, in Australia and Tanzania and Ghana. Even. So, what will be the expected cash flow we are estimating from that region? Cash flow from operations I'm asking about. We, uh, for us, you know, social business considered as a whole, including all global uh, manufacturing facilities. So currently, uh, currently uh, we had uh, cash flow close to 160 crores plus. So going forward, uh, with the growth, we're expecting similar levels. Okay, and what will be the growth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are starting mm -hmm. to currently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, 15 to 17. 15% plus. Oh, 15% plus. In volume terms. Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, the next question uh, related to future innovations we are targeting in defense sector is uh, the university sector uh, on the drawing uh, segment or the missile segment. So, what will be the next thing we are targeting in the defense? And how we are going It is six to ten. Uh, I think couple of from couple of years. It is slightly long. What we are doing? Yeah. Uh, your line seems to be disturbed. Can you connect again? Yeah, just, uh, I want to ask questions related to the defense sector, which is six different expenses from the So, what is the next uh, plan we are targeting or 
the innovation as Novin just said, we are entering into the rockets or the missiles or drones. So up to the next game, how we are getting the orders to increase the six percent to maybe ten percent. मार्जिन इन डिफेंस रेवेन्यू and how many months uh, we takes to receive the uh, data payment from defense and how many how many more orders we are expecting in current years so the working capital cycle for defense is normally higher than our uh, working capital cycle for non defense but since we have been saying that once we start supplying the product it get uh, reached to the normal level of uh, like explosives so like we have started supplying of multi mode hand grenades and other products so we are not uh, we are not expecting that the data days or inventory levels to go beyond the normal level what we have been in the business for uh, explosive market explosive section second point uh, more orders definitely yes like we have said that we are likely to the complete the all the trials of pinaka in next uh, couple of months and once we complete all these trials we will be getting more orders in this financial year and there are plenty of uh, rfps in which we have already applied but the cycle time from apply uh, submission of rfp and getting orders always takes some time so as of now the total order book is 1100 crores and once we receive more orders we will update and uh, defense margin so So as a business, what we have mentioned that in this financial year we are targeting that our EBITDA margin should reach to around 20 to 22 percent. So definitely we are optimistic that we will try to, or we should be able to reach on upper side of the EBITDA margins, which we have given a guidance on that. Okay. And then is there any different equipment we are exporting to any other country? Uh, in Uh, we have already shared that we received orders of the Nakar rockets, and which we are supplying. And there are plenty of uh, small, small products which we are already okay. supplying to various countries. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aniket Mittal from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yes. Um. Thank you for the opportunity. I had two questions. Um. The first one is on the realization front. I think during the quarter we've seen a seven percent sequential dip over there, um, and you highlighted ammonium nitrate prices have gone lower. Uh, so, based on the current prices, in your view, what would be the steady state uh, realization that we can expect? like we have already shared that uh, the current uh, realizations of finish good depends on the current raw material prices and like we have shared that in this quarter the average realization of explosives was around 66913 per ton and in this financial year we are expecting that the prices of raw material should fall and that will benefit in increasing or enhancing the demand in the market so at this moment it is very difficult that how much it will fall but like we have seen that it can fall and it can go up again also in the second half of the year so in the first half we see that there can be a drop in the finished good prices and in the second half we see that it can come back again so we are not 100% sure at this stage how the volatility of ammonium nitrate prices can play But uh, as it happens, we will definitely share on quarterly basis. Okay. And the second question was was just on the uh, overseas markets. This year we've seen a very strong growth coming in. Uh, revenues have almost doubled. If you could just highlight which are the key geographies which have contributed to this uh, doubling of revenues. Yeah. Uh, like uh, we have been saying that our businesses in 
Turkey has done exceedingly well. Uh, we have almost doubled the revenues from Turkey. Similarly, we have doubled our revenues in uh, Australia. We have almost more than double in Nigeria. So we are doing very well in all these subsidies, uh, except Ghana, where we are still in the nascent stage. So we are expecting better revenues in coming years, especially from West Africa and South Africa. And we are expecting that the more footprints which we have said, that from the current eight manufacturing destination, we will start for new in this financial year. So backed up by all these uh, efforts which we have taken in last couple of years, we see that the we will see that there is growth in overseas business even from the current level. Okay. Just to follow up to that in your 15% uh, uh, volume growth guidance, uh, how would this be split uh, between domestic and international? So we give the growth guidance or volume guidance for basically domestic market. But as far as international market is concerned, definitely there will be a also growth of around 15 to 20 percent. Okay, thank you so much. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Alisha Mahavla from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so my first question is this order book of 2900 crores, uh, what uh, this is executed over what period? Next one year. One year, and this is, yeah, this, this is both for the defense and the non-defense part. So defense, as we said, we expect the revenue to be double, so it may be for one, one and a half year. Okay, and the non-defense order book of 1800 you're saying should be executed in one year? Uh, this will include uh, additional, as I said, we'll have additional orders from Coal India post-October. So you'll have uh, additional order book for next six months. Okay, understood. And the defense order book of 1800, uh, sorry, 1100 crores, is this including uh, the Pinaka uh, rockets? Because you said the product is still under evaluation. But you also mentioned that you are exporting the product. Uh, we have already received an export order of, order of Pinaka, so that is included in the defense order book. So as we okay. are commercialization and testing, that goes for the domestic orders of Pinaka. And is it possible to quantify that once uh, the domestic testing is complete, what could the order value be? Uh, once we receive the RFPs and tenders are completed, we'll update the same. Sure. And uh, our uh, target or aspiration for margin is 21-22% for FI24. Will this be driven uh, by faster growth in on the defense side or because of growth in the export? I just want to understand which piece is more margin accretive and hence expected to give us uh, relatively better margins. Like we have already mentioned that the improvement in margin will be mainly because of few factors like the increased defense business, improved overseas businesses and the uh, volume growth of around 15 and it can go up to 20% also in this financial years. So these things will definitely help us and there were other factors which have impacted the bottom line in the FI23, which was mainly on currency fluctuation and impact of hyperinflationary side. So these things we don't expect to continue in the next financial year. I hope this okay. will to your question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sanjaya Satapati from Ampersand Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so thank you, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for giving all the detailed guidance. So can I just ask you one thing that uh, considering uh, how the raw material realization and many other things are fluctuating and all the currency, uh, so based on your volume growth guidance, will your absolute profit to grow faster than volume growth or not? Yeah. So we're given a guidance of 15% volume growth, so we expect similar growth in our bottom line. Okay, and this 15% is for exclusive, not the defense part, right, right ma'am? Agreed. 
Turkey is a country economy where hyperinflation uh, has been uh, affected since uh, the financial year 2023 so as a result of the restatement of the balance sheet items of non monetary items there was a, a loss of around 48 crores that had to be remitted to pnl as per india's 29 so as a result the expenses had gone up uh, but okay. 2% plus at the beta level okay so for this reason this 400 crores has not increased ma'am so this 400 crores we cannot quantify as compared to previous year because if you see the sales have also gone up by 75% so in proportion expenses also go up export and overseas has also gone up so as a result freight and forwarding also increases capacity revenue profits etc so like you have said that we have acquired rajasthan explosives chemical limited it is based out of uh, rajasthan which is in the city of dhulpur and uh, this acquisition will help us to expand our market base in the northern part of india and the uh, explosive capacity is around 30000 ton which we are likely to increase in next one year time and the company has uh, almost a uh, a big range of products which we are already operating into and the company's land is almost more than 900 acres and uh, this is what we can share and as far as the revenue is concerned we have already shared that it is in the it is in the range of around 100 100 crores sorry 200 crores and we are likely to continue this okay then sir what is the consideration that we have paid for the same Uh, the consideration we have already uh, done is around uh, 70 crores okay sir uh, so the second question is actually on ammonium nitrate prices so is it possible to share the average price of q4 and where it is currently we don't share the average prices of our actual purchases sorry for that Okay, because sir, in Q1 and Q2 you had shared that uh, ammonium nitrate is hovering between around eighty-three thousand rupees per ton. So just wanted to compare uh, that uh, industry-wide uh, where the prices are, not specifically for solar, but industry-wide in prices. All right, the current RC prices is around sixty thousand rupees, sixty thousand, okay. and which has reduced from eighty almost eighty-four in the peak. It has reduced to sixty thousand in the end of March. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Abhishek from DSP. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, just in terms of your, uh, uh, you know, initiating systems, the the top line growth seems to be quite healthy at about forty four odd percent, uh, and uh, subsequently your standalone margins are also very healthy. So, is it also because of product mix, or how should one look at it? yeah you are very right it's a combination of product mix and uh, 
the current impact which we have seen in the business that we are improving our footprints in various parts of the country. So that is helping to improve our realizations also. So it's a combination of various factors and one of that is increasing initiating system sales. Okay. Uh, so the other thing is which you uh, uh, you know partly also mentioned is that housing and infra demand seem to have gotten impacted uh, also because of uh, price increases so with that normalizing now with uh, you know ammonium nitrate prices coming off you think that segment can see healthy improvement from here on which if you, if you, if i look at a fourth quarter number you're virtually flat so how should one look at that segment so we are expecting that the demand from housing infra so increase in this financial year. The key reasons are that in the last year because of high prices of not only explosives but of steel and cement also, a lot of work were getting deferred and payments were also slow from the uh, various organizations. So in this financial year we are uh, expecting that this will improve. Apart from this, there is a natural buoyancy in this section because the government is also pushing for completing all the infrastructure projects as early as possible. So this will help in improving uh, our sales from housing infra. But like uh, last, uh, from last 15-20 days we are seeing that there are unseasonal rains. So these factors can keep coming which can uh, impact the demand. But on an average we are expecting that demand for our explosives should be 15% and we are trying to increase from 15 to 20% in this year. Okay, great. Uh, so one last question from my side, since we've increased the CAPEX intensity to almost about 750 crores and uh, a lot of it is also going into defense, uh, do you expect this uh, CAPEX momentum to continue into FI25 as well or how, how should one look at it? It is very difficult to comment at this stage, but definitely looking at the huge opportunities and the company's aggressive plans in expanding the footprints, expanding the product portfolio, uh, investing new technologies, projects, products, uh, which will help our uh, presence in variety of customer sections, which can sustain the future expansion or future growth plan. So we believe that in this year we are expecting 750 crores and in the next year we are expecting that it should be around 600 to 700 crores. Okay. And one should assume similar asset turns, X of defense uh, in these uh, to continue. Whatever you are doing current asset turns, uh, these new capex also should be able to earn you that asset turns. Is that, is that a right assumption, sir? No, this may not be right assumption at this stage. Like we have been saying that defense expansions, whatever we will do, it will take at least three, four years to turn around and then increase the sales from those assets. But like we have been investing in last almost 10 years, so we are getting the fruits of those investments. In this year, we are expecting a revenue of 800 crores. And with the current CapEx program, it can definitely uh, the capex which we have already done, the revenue should reach to around 1200 crores comfortably. But like we are absorbing the new technologies, uh, increasing the product portfolios, so the capex will be there and those things will help us in the coming years. Got it. Great, sir. Thank you so much for answering my questions and wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Hishan Tosnewal from Polar Ventures LLP, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, as Manishi said that uh, we'll see 15 to 20% rise in the volume terms. Can you give me the breakup of the color or how much it would be towards the explosive side and towards the defense side and would that lead to the top line growth in the same ratio or would it be higher because of uh, the 15 to 20% volume rise? My first question. Uh, like I have already answered that uh, the volume growth will be there in India and overseas business and the growth will come mainly from whole India, Singraini and housing and infrastructure sector. As far as defense is concerned, uh, this business doesn't work on volume growth of like 10, 15, 20 percent. These are mainly dependent on products and each product are being numbered in a different manner. So SKUs are different, unit measurements are different. So for defense section, we have mentioned that 
In this year, we are expecting revenue of 800 crores. We will try to improve it, but uh, from 400 to 800 crores is our target for this year. And the capex that you have done is basically for what? It is for exclusive or the capex has been done for the defense part, defense part of our business. Capex program or capex which we yes, have already the no the capex program that we have given of 400 or something. We have given the breakup just now. I just couldn't see it. That's why I'm asking. We will show. We will show. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Karan Gupta from Varinim Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, thanks for the green opportunity. Uh, uh, most of the questions have been answered, but uh, the question regarding the uh, cash flow from operations, uh, as of now, at 23, what will be the CFO? Uh, sir, uh, a small request that can you connect after the con call? Okay. Because your voice is not clear. Sorry for this. Okay, sure. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Pratik Mukastar from RNL Investment Partners. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Manish ji, congratulations to you and your team for a fantastic set of numbers. I wish you all the best for the future. Most of my questions have been answered, so thank you so much. Thank you very much for your kind appreciation. Thank you. Our last question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you very much for the follow up. Uh, so, just some clarification on our different business. So, we have recently got uh, order in a lot of mission, and also we have a few pending order from NMFG. Uh, we also have export order. So, the kind of revenue growth uh, number in different which we're talking about 800 crores that seems to be, uh, I mean, primarily coming from uh, these order uh, orders itself. Uh, just wanted to check that is there any upside because. Uh, in the normal course of the different business where we are doing some 300 crore kind of annual one way, uh, that business, how how is that panning out and is there any upside of this 800 crore which we are talking about in the current year? You know, like we said, no, the current order book is 1100 crores and if everything goes well and if they buy out in this first year itself, so definitely we can increase our sales from 800 to 1100 crores. But like we have seen in our past uh, experience, it takes time and there are always some uh, challenges keep coming because you, you have already aware that this is the first time that any private company is supplying ready to use ammunition. Lighting ammunition has been ordered for the first time to any private company from the country. This has been developed for the first time. Similarly, Pinaka rockets have never been exported in the past. So this is also the new milestone for any company like our solar industries. So if you look and capture all these things, it takes time. And 1100 crore order book gives a lot of uh, room of optimism that in the coming year, we will see a much better performance from the transaction. And in this year, we are comfortable that uh, we should uh, we should comfortably cross 800 crores. Okay. I think just one more clarification, the guidance part which you mentioned is roughly 15 to 20 percent growth in revenue. That you are primarily talking only on the volume front, right? Uh, because the prices this year will be falling because of falling raw material prices. So the 15 to 20 percent revenue growth guidance which you're talking is the, it's a volume growth, right? Yeah, whatever I have said is already said. You can look at my consult script that should answer your question. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question of the question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. Uh, we expect our shareholders and stakeholders to keep supporting us like this in the coming financial years as well. Thank you so much.
Thank you. On behalf of Antique Stockbroking, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.